Uh, hi, I'm Arthur. And for as long as I could remember, I always had this obsession with the idea of favoritism. I know it's a common trope for kids to constantly ask what your favorite thing is in regards to some random specific thing they want your opinion on, but for me it's extended far into my 20s where I always like the idea of having a favorite of something. I never truly know why, because at the end of the day your favorite thing tends to be a bit arbitrary. It's usually just down to how you feel about something at any given moment, right? It can change with the slightest breeze, which is fine. I still like to ask my friends things about their current fixations. What's your favorite Pokemon? What's your favorite game? Favorite song? Favorite miniature? And so on and so forth. But for me, it's hard to parse what my favorite of anything is. Possibly because of the crippling ADHD in my brain, but I do find my favorite thing across most mediums is usually different depending on my mood. The day, <laughs> just depending on the weather, and so on. But this is just me waxing poetic about something juvenile. And why should you care? You shouldn't. Because simply put, I just like learning what people's favorite thing is because I think it gives me clarity into their tastes, their decision making, and so on. It's pretty easy to say, oh, my favorite character is Grimaldus because he's cool, which is all fine and dandy. It's pretty easy to like Grimaldus. But when it comes to someone saying, oh, my favorite character is actually Hetman Bronzy from the Legion book in the Horus Heresy, my curiosity is immediately piqued because I find the distinction and reasoning behind those kinds of ideas more interesting than just, oh, he cool. Though I should note, it doesn't make your opinion less valid if you just like a character because he's cool. So what I'm going to do in this video, my thesis statement is to pitch to you all an idea. The idea is what my favorite character is and why, and hopefully you will understand. And if you keep watching to the end, I have a bit of a request for all of you. With that uncomfortably long preamble out of the way, I am now free to talk about some weird nothing character that I absolutely adore. Well, adore isn't the right word to describe how I feel about this man. If you've watched my mega collab video, then you would know who I'm about to talk about, but for those who didn't, my favorite character in all of Warhammer 40k is a disabled space marine by the name of Saravan, Saravan of the Vergantes tribe. To describe him without giving context would be a bit unprofessional. Saravan is a space marine who is attached to the Emperor Spears chapter of space marines. They are of the lineage of the Ultramarines. They are incredibly dignified in their bearing and are a part of a collective, or well, what was once a collective of space marines known as the Adeptus Velari, which are three space marine chapters dedicated to the care and protection of an area known as Alara's Vale. These three chapters were the Emperor Spears, the Star Scorpions, and the Celestial Lions. So on to the interesting part where Saravan appears. See, when Gilliman sent out the ships that were filled with Primaris reinforcements to divvy out to the various chapters of Space Marines, the Emperor's Spears were in the Imperium Nihilus. So for those who don't know, the galaxy in 40k is cut in half by this massive wall of warp energies that stems from the Eye of Terror, which makes makes it so that getting to the dark side of the galaxy where Terra isn't is incredibly difficult. So there were no reinforcements, there was actually just barely the tech and records to teach them how to make the Primaris Marines from scratch. Now here is the real tragedy. Though they had all the technology needed and the equipment to do it, as well as the information, there is no one size fits all for these things. So there were entire generations of space marines that were doomed to die due to gene seed issues. Specifically during, of course, the alpha and beta phases of implantation, which is the phases responsible for the generation of a Primaris Marine over the standard Space Marine. There were many deaths before there was an inkling of a success. It was a brute force adaptation process in order to make it so they had the ability to rapidly generate these types of Marines, as one of the chapters of the Adeptus Velari had fallen to chaos and the other one was being assaulted by orcs. It led to suspicions by the locals that they are avenging 
ghosts rather than elite warriors because they kept coming to take the male children of the village once they were of a certain age just so that they could make more marines or attempt to and try to succeed in this path. After an unlisted amount of deaths but enough to fill a large tomb, there was a single success, a breakthrough, that led to a refinement of the process as a whole and now they could make actual Primaris Marines without as much rejection. Unfortunately, the first Primaris Marine they created that did not immediately die to rejection was not a perfect specimen. The individual did survive, but the sinew coils were too tight, which is the metal coils that you use to increase a Primaris Marine's strength, and they locked up in one side of the person's body. And the Magnificent caused muscular issues to develop on the side of the body that the sinew coils were locking up on. This individual was basically permanently disfigured and paralyzed on the left side of his body. And this individual, unlike his brothers who were killed off due to the lack of success, was left alive. And this individual is Saravan, the first Primaris Marine. Saravan is a character that had an introduction like no other I've ever seen in a work of 40k fiction. I'd honestly recommend reading the book Spear of the Emperor and then coming back to this video because I'm not going to do what happens here justice. And while you're at it, read the short story The First Primaris. It's a really good read. There is another Emperor's Spears short story. It's also really, really good, but if you're interested in Saravan, these are the two books to read. But basically, what happens is the protagonist of the book, Anurata Daz, is sent off by her master to investigate this planet they landed on, Nemeton, the homeworld of the Emperor's Spears, to see its traditions. She finds a tomb filled with the bones of dead space marines in the recesses of the walls. As she delves deeper into the tomb, she finds the bodies become fresher and fresher until she finds the bodies of the failed Primaris marines. It is then when someone hobbles out from the shadows of the room and simply asks her why she is here. She sees he is big, but doesn't know what he is. She sees he has trouble moving, but is also very articulate in his way of speaking. She gets the same level, if not similar level, of threat from him that she does from any space marine she's ever encountered. This individual introduces himself as Saravan of the Vergantes, and doesn't elaborate further from there. She simply assumes he's some menial or a servant to the other space marines, as it's not uncommon for failed aspirants whom fail the trials of space marines to become a servant of some sort to the chapter they were attempting to join. The conversation they have is incredibly somber, and it always has this air of him being comfortable but trying to read the room of what she is trying to do or say. There's this exchange that I'm going to paraphrase, but he asks her what she sees in this room and she says that it is a place of great sadness. He gives a weak half smile and thanks her for that. As most people of her kind would say, it's a place of great shame, which I think is so telling of his character that he thought that that was a significant enough answer to deserve some kind of point to be made. Because alongside that, it also brings into question, hey, why was he down in this tomb in the first place alone? It's never fully answered, but it's kind of obvious he was down there mourning the loss of the people he went to the trials with. The children he would have grown up with but had died due to the imperfect process of creating Primaris Marines. He is a sad character, but he isn't pitiable. He is a prideful character, as you find out later that he is the captain of one of the most important vessels in the Emperor Spears fleet, the Hex. Which is kind of big because after the heresy, there was this whole law that Space Marines aren't usually allowed to be in charge of Navy vessels or Navy fleets as a whole, so that's kind of that's kind of neat. He's a character of great pride, and it's shown none more closely than in the short story, The First Primaris, where the same character as before, Enurata Daz, is having a data extraction, where everything she has seen in the run of a day is being pulled from her augmentic eye. It's being attended to by a tech priest, and she remarks why the tech priest hasn't gone far enough to try and help Saravan, because obviously he wants to be on the battlefield with his brothers. It's actually part 
part of Spears' custom that they want to die on the battlefield, specifically with a weapon in their hand. And that is when the tech priest remarks that he has tried. Quite a lot, actually. He has recommended everything from cybernetics to full body reconstructions to even dreadnoughtification, which I think is a word. But Saravan has rejected all of them. Though he admits that if he is ever injured enough, he might consider going through the dreadnought process, depending on if you strike him at the right time. It's discovered that to imply he is incomplete is almost an insult to him and his character. He is a prideful man. He believes that he is exactly the way he should be. And sure, he recognizes the difficulties of his life, but it doesn't mean he quits because of it. It's really good representation of disability, as well as a good representation of someone who is prideful without being arrogant. It's super cool in my opinion and very nuanced. Saravan of the Vergantes is a powerful character. He lets us know that even in 40k, no matter how dark or difficult your life is, it's always a matter of perspective. When it comes to disabilities, there is this idea. I hear a lot from a lot of friends and just people that I've encountered in my life that have been affected by disabilities that genuinely hinder their life, that you tend to get this idea of grieving your own losses a lot. Where the idea of your life before now is dead, and the new life you lead is based on the new template that you have to adopt. And the sooner you move on to the next goalpost, the better, because you'll be able to adjust and understand what your life is going to be like, and you can harbor less resentment towards what happened or the issues that you developed. I think Saravan is a good representation of this, as he is such a powerful character in my eyes. And it's why I think of him a lot. It's been about a year and a half since I last read the Spear of the Emperor book, and about six months since I last read the ancillary short stories on a flight to Georgia of all places. But to say I still think about him and those books to this day quite frequently is a bit of an understatement. So I mentioned before that I have something I want to ask of you. I want you all to let me know in the comments what your favorite character in 40k is and why. I don't care if it's an essay, I just genuinely want to see what other people have to say. And I will be looking, because who knows, you might inspire me to go digging into a character and then make another one of these videos to discuss individuals. Now that I'm kind of winding down from discussing factions, I kind of want to discuss some more intricate and interesting individuals. So I like getting ideas from all of you because I want to give stuff that you guys would watch. So, if you could do that, it would mean the world. Also, if you like this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe as it does help the channel a lot. Special thanks to my channel members for supporting me, and if you want to support me as well as gain access to additional content, then become a channel member today. Thanks once again for watching. And I reserve the right to change my mind who my favorite character is at any given moment, suck my nuts.